Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Kohi, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing. Um, and I got a, uh, a request from a, one of my uh, Facebook um, followers, Joe Corson. He says, uh, I got a question for you. Is there a way to set up an IPT template so that the custom properties uh, have the IDW that I can use to bring them over so when I look at iProperties on a drawing, it shows what I put in the IPT? So I initially thought that, you know, he was talking about just linking the title block attributes, but what turns out to be is not only does he want to link the title block attributes so that that stuff shows up in the title block, he also wants it to actually populate the custom properties or even regular properties, it's the same procedure, um, to the file itself so that he does a search in vault. Um, it shows both the IPT or IAM as well as the, uh, the drawing uh, and the search results. So, um, here's a little ditty on how to do that. Okay, so when you're dealing with anything in Vault, obviously you have to first check it out when you're gonna make changes to it. So let's check it out first and see what we're gonna do here. So if I go into the I properties, take a look at the summary, let's go ahead and add a title to this and we'll just call it the, uh, the Brock Ripper here. Go into the project, add a part number, and as you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to get the part number. Uh, I'm just gonna type one here. Uh, and then I'm going to add a description to this also. So, gripper, comma, arm, mount. Sure. Go ahead and apply that. Now, let's flip over to the drawing. Now, once we flip over to the drawing, you're going to see that the title block information automatically fills out. You simply change the, the text properties to look at the model, and you're good to go. The problem is it doesn't actually link the I properties of this drawing file to the um, to the title block properties that are brought over from the model. So I'm going to use some iLogic code uh, to make this happen. So as you can see, title is blank, part number is not reading the right part number, and the description is also blank. So I'm going to fire up a little iLogic uh, magic here. It's not even magic. It's it's like the you know the most basic form of pulling rabbit out of hat. Um, because really what, what we're trying to do here is when I search inside a vault for something like gripper, comma, arm mount, notice that it's only finding the assembly. It's not finding the drawing file that's associated to it because the two properties haven't been linked yet. So that's really what Joe was asking me to do. So let's just go ahead and, uh, and do that. So take a look at the where used. Obviously it's going to, that's, you know, it, there's a couple extra steps then to see the drawing uh, associated to it. So he didn't want to do that. And I don't believe it. So what we're going to do is we're going to call up uh, uh, iProperties, or um, iLogic functionality here. And I'm going to paste in some sample code that I'm going to give you on my blog um, that you can just paste in here and make all the appropriate changes that you want. So you see that at the bottom, it's going to say iProperty value custom um, with uh, property one name. So, I mean, that, um, that, uh, that that's really how you link the custom properties together. But, but the ones that I'm going to do aren't necessarily custom. So I wanted to show you how to do both. Um, so this one here, I'm just linking the part number then to the iProperty value of the model name project part number, right? So the project tab part number field, same thing with description. And then I'll do the same thing then for, uh, for title. And really that's all you do is you, you say the iProperty value of, of, of the current file equals the iProperty value from the model. And you can see that the, the model is really the designator there. And as soon as I do that, uh, go over to the drawing, hit the event trigger because I haven't told it when to trigger the event yet. Um, and now you can see the summary. Um, it brought over the part number, the description, and it's all groovy. So when I check this in to Vault, um, when I do that search, it's going to find both the drawing file as well as the assembly file or part file you know whatever you, you set this up to, you set this up to do so if I again if I search for gripper comma arm notice that in the search results it finds both the assembly file as well as the drawing file so just what Joe's asking for and, and I really think that's that's some uh, that's a handy bit of, of, of code right there because it, 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 it serves a, a reasonable function so how do I get this into a template file so that I never have to do this for uh, or I don't have to do this for every single file that I open. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to call up my event triggers. I'm going to make sure that before saving, I call up the event of copy props for this document. Now I'm going to go into the file save as, save it as a template in my template directory, so that when I start a new file with this template, 
um, it will always link those two properties together. So here you go. You can see I start a new file using that template. Create a base view of the drawing. Populates my, uh, not only my title block information, um, but when I go to save this thing, it will um, it will link the two drawing properties together. So I haven't saved it yet because that's the event trigger that I called up. So as soon as I hit save, save the file out, it's going to link the two properties together and I'll be good to go. And there you are. Hope this is helpful for everybody. Um, again, this will be on my blog at mfgcommunity.autodesk.com. Uh, mfg Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Uh, you can find me at Rob Cohey and check me out on Facebook. See you later.